the video, Principles of Oral and Maxillofacial Radiology, includes 15 lectures. Teeth and Supporting Structures is one of the lectures in this series. You may view this free lecture for your own assessment as to quality and content. Students of Dental Hygiene will find the complete video, including all 15 lectures, will both serve the curriculum and be helpful for review prior to National Board examination. Teeth and their supporting structures present with images that range from radiolucent to radiopaque, depending on their thickness and physical density. What may be accepted as the usual or normal image of these structures may vary in both photographic characteristics and their structural presentation, depending on exposure techniques, angulation of the X-ray beam, and anatomic variation. The ability to recognize pathosis in radiographs is based in part on an understanding of the wide variation in what might be considered usual or normal radiographic anatomy. Before proceeding, it must be understood that not all images of radiographic anatomy presented in this module are visible in all radiographs of all patients. For this reason, it is in your best interest to look at as many examples of radiographs showing these landmarks as possible. Your textbook is a good source for these images. Of the naturally occurring substances in the body, tooth enamel is the most dense. Because of its physical density, enamel appears more radiopaque or light than any other natural substance imaged. Dentin is less dense than enamel, and as a consequence, less radiopaque. Because dentin has a density similar to bone, it has a radiographic appearance similar to bone. Covering the surface of the tooth's root is a layer of cementum. It is present in only a thin layer, and because the density of cementum is similar to dentin, cementum is not usually observed. Cementum is radiographically evident in the condition known as hypercementosis. The dental anomaly hypercementosis is of unknown origin. Hypercementosis results in the excess deposition of cementum on the root of a tooth. Radiographically, this appears as a bulbous enlargement of the tooth's root. In cases of hypercementosis, the radiodensity of cementum is shown to be similar to that of dentin and bone. By itself, hypercementosis is a benign condition that requires no treatment. The radiographic image of a tooth is one of smooth, unbroken contour with uniform densities of enamel and dentin. Observed changes in contour and or density may indicate pathosis. In this bite wing radiograph, the density of an area of enamel on the distal of the mandibular right first molar has changed from radiopaque to radiolucent, indicating tooth structure has been lost. This is the picture of proximal dental caries beginning just apical to the contact point. The density of both enamel and dentin has become more radiolucent on the mesial of the second molar. This is the picture of proximal dental caries spreading from enamel into dentin. In the cervical region of almost every tooth in this radiograph, there is a diffuse radiolucent area with an ill-defined border. This represents the image of cervical burnout, a normal finding. It does not represent the loss of tooth structure, but is caused by the normal morphology of teeth that allows for a greater quantity of x-rays to pass through the area. In addition, cervical burnout is perceived to be even more evident because of its proximity to the more radiopaque bone-covered root. Cervical burnout may have the appearance of a fan-shaped 
diffuse and ill-defined radiolucency associated with posterior teeth shown in the illustration to your left. It may take on the appearance of a diffuse and ill-defined banding in the cervical region of anterior teeth shown in the illustration to your right. You should expect to see cervical burnout associated with the cervical region of almost all teeth that have a good level of bone support. It should not be confused with a proximal carious lesion that begins more to the occlusal or incisal, just apical to the contact point. Also, it should not be confused with root surface caries that appears cupped out, more darkly radiolucent, and usually requires bone loss prior to initiation. When viewing the radiographic image of teeth, it is important to be aware of two artifacts of imaging. First, when the images of two very dense objects are superimposed, the image of one appears to be outlined with a radiolucent band. This radiolucency does not represent a loss of tooth structure, but instead is an optical illusion. Second, two objects physically in contact will appear to be separated by a radiolucency. This is referred to as peripheral burnout. Peripheral burnout is evident because of the narrow point of contact of the objects allows more x-rays to pass than the adjacent thicker regions of teeth. Pulp consists of soft tissue and, as a result, is the most radiolucent component of the tooth's image. As shown here, the contour of the pulp chamber and root canal is normally smooth. Irregularity in this contour, or a decrease or increase in the observed size of either the chamber or canal, may suggest pathosis. As a person advances in age, or a tooth is subjected to trauma, secondary dentin may be laid down on the walls of the pulp chamber and root canal. This causes these structures to appear more narrow or even obliterated because secondary dentin has a radiodensity similar to primary dentin. This is evident in the illustration to your right. Secondary dentin is also deposited in response to dental caries. This is the body's attempt to prevent involvement of the pulp by caries. This is evident in the illustration to your left. When a tooth has become devitalized by pathosis or trauma, secondary dentin is no longer deposited on the walls of the pulp chamber and root canal as the person ages. Note how large the pulp chamber and root canal appear in the central incisor. This tooth was devitalized many years ago. Compare that picture with the appearance of the pulp chamber and root canal in the lateral incisor and canine that show obliteration by secondary dentin laid down in the course of aging. Note also that the lateral incisor has an associated dental anomaly. This anomaly is called dens in dente, or tooth within a tooth. To watch the complete video, go to MediaMedent.com, scroll down to Free Lectures, and select the corresponding video.